call to order the select board meeting of, my goodness, June 4th, 2018. Though it feels a little bit like April 4th out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So, okay. Put the on there just in case. Uh, we've got two sets of, mi of uh, minutes to review because uh, we did meet the week of uh, the Memorial Day week. It was a short meeting, but we did have a a meeting. So, Denise, how do they look? Okay. All right, and I'm ready by consensus to accept those two sets of minutes. Any community input this evening? Okay. Um, department head business. Um, I, I will go right to you, George, but just remind me to come back and talk about building inspector and fire, if you will. Okay. Because uh, sometimes I have just some things to say, so come on up, George. Thank you. Rollins for police with an O and a, with a zero instead of an O for the zip, for the O's. Okay. So it's R zero. Only if you're at seven hundred, is that are you at that? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, P offer show on services for the street sweeping. I want to get that done. Okay. Right. Is that the budget guidelines? Yes. All right. Um, are you doing? Are you, do you want to sure. move this? Okay. Purchase order one four two two for what is that word? Show, show, them. show, them show services them. for street sweeping for a sum of fifteen hundred. Is that not to exceed, or is that a, a good price? That's not budget item. It goes up. We'll stop at that. At okay, for fifteen hundred dollars. I'll second that. Okay. Any questions? Um, so, I, I will just make a comment about purchase orders. My feeling is that the purchase order is, uh, especially when it's done ahead of time, which is the way it's supposed to be, thank you so much, George, is that, you know, it, it, if it gets exceeded by like one to four, maybe, percent, I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. and I don't know that our, I don't think our auditor would either. Mm -hmm. So, it doesn't have to be precise. What I'm concerned about when I see something is that it's within the, the we paid attention to the budget mm -hmm. and uh, and that it's ahead of time. We love that we all do it ahead of time. So, other than that, I don't have anything else to say. Do you have any other mm -hmm. questions? All right, I have a call. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Passes. Oops, yes, sign it, Suzanne. Okay. Okay. I don't know when it's going to be. It's, uh, it's going to schedule it in. So. And you'll, you'll talk to talk Chief to PD yeah. so we can make sure that downtown is notified to keep the guys out of the way. We can put something on, <clears throat> on the news blog too, so check, just coordinate yeah. with Caroline. And <clears throat> they might want to put that road construction just starting Wednesday on Heritage. This week? Heritage. They're going to grind out Heritage, those spots, and then they're going to dig that. The ground crew is available this week. Going to take the grinder to Rochester to do a small project, and it's coming back Thursday to start the other project. Please check in with Caroline, because she'll make sure that just a small thing goes out on. Yeah, I, I put it on Facebook and a Facebook page already. So the, PD usually forwards it, or the fire department can forward it, so everybody gets it on okay. each site. So okay, but there's still a the news it. blog that comes out, right. and there's some just to uh, cover yeah, all the faces. Thank you, and also. Um, Get it back. <laughs> I don't. I, I'll never learn Thank the paper process. Sorry, <laughs> right, I, I just don't. Um, so, because Caroline will send it to posting, so it yep. means it also appears printed at the post office here and at the library. Okay. So it's just a check in. Just coordinate that with, with Caroline. She'll, she'll be good about that. Um, okay. Anything else that you have? We have a bit of a list here. I see. No, no, it's, it's all small things. No, I have a bit of a list, too. Oh. They, they, they could be intersecting. Okay. I, yeah. Light poles in Stockdale. Oh, Who light. Owns them? Do you know? I don't. No, I don't either. I know they've come up in conversation because some folks want to see them painted. Some folks want to see them working. And they're not working? There's one has been out for 12 years, I've been told. 12 years. That's quite a while. Hmm. So, <clears throat> I... I'm not sure how to how to find out. You might check with Caroline to see if she can maybe I check. I mentioned it to Caroline, and she thinks the town owns them because they public services uh, ever source does not own fancy streetlights. I've been told. Okay. 
so I think when the development gets taken over, I think the town owns The town owns them? them? Oh. I know it happens that way in Bellwood when the town takes over. The All right, so then, so now we're talking about what? We're talking about? I don't know. I might have Ray look at it. He's an electrician. Ray from water. Ray, oh, oh, the superintendent. Yes, yes, got it. So what's his name? Well, remind me his last. Ray, do you remember? Okay, never mind. That's all right. That's all right. He's a licensed electrician. I just okay. have to come up and see if we can take a look at it. See if there's power there or something. Yeah. If it's a power issue, then we might have to take it apart. It might be a broken wire in the ground. Or yeah. After 12 years, it might be nice to have it fixed. Yeah, I was stopped by the person that lives at, I don't get it, I don't remember his name. He lives at number 440 Starfield Circle. And he also mentioned the sidewalk in front of his house. There's a lot of roots that come up, and the sidewalk is a dick. It is a trip as we will fix that. Thank you. Myself. Uh, okay. I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. It's not going to happen until after the projects are done. Yeah. But there's about maybe 50 to 75 feet of sidewalk. We'll dig out and take the roots out of it because the trees already been cut down. We'll get the stump out of there and we can build that side, put that sidewalk back. Is it a seat. concrete or an asphalt sidewalk? It's pavement, a hot top. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I don't think it'll be five ton of hot top, so it's about 70 balls a ton or whatever. So, okay. And we'll do it ourselves. All right. So I want to give you a heads up on that. Yeah. Uh, anything on from engineering on? No. He, he helped sign a general services agreement. He knows he's got it. He he. We passed along some insurance mm. questions from our insurance comp, uh, carrier back to him, and he also knows that he owes us the Sligo Road. So no, but but you know I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. So get Caroline uh, to check in with him. Or another board member. Yeah, it's nothing we could have to do right today. But no, but it would be nice to. It, exactly it, right, if we can. And, and to get the cost mm -hmm. so that we can start to figure out how we're right. going to right. manage it. Right. And if we can manage it, right? So that's so it would be helpful to to have that. So I would say keep okay. on keep keep on him. That's what I have for Stockdale and Poles, the lights, and. We have your Public Works Association. Are you familiar with? Hampshire Public Works Association. Yeah, well, I Road so. Agents Association. Yeah, that, I, I've gotten uh, hold I, of that. And when I was at the meeting in Dover for the stormwater, yep. they said a lot of the guys went to a Hampshire Public Works Association meeting just recently, and they find out a lot of good things. And the, the guy, one of the guys suggested that we probably ought to belong to it. So we you know, get involved with some of these meetings. And I don't know how often they meet, but... Personally, I don't know how Denise feels, but personally, I feel networking can be really important with people, colleagues who are close by. Yep. You know, and I agree. That, I mean, there's some things that come up, you know, rules that change and stuff like that. I think we need exactly. to know. Yep. And we're a small town, right. so we don't have a lot of the resources ourselves. So I, I don't know, Denise, the do you feel? Road Asian Association yeah. has meetings and stuff too, but it's again, it's on a smaller scale. But right. I think being involved with both of these would probably, you know. Yeah, but find out if there's a cost. Maybe I, I think there's a, he said there's a small cost yeah. to do it, but I'm not sure what it is. I just want to make, bring that up. Yeah, I would say that the board would be amenable. Of course, it's going to, I'd oh, yeah. like to see what the cost is going oh, yeah. to be. Yeah. That's it? On your list? No, you I have a long list. So, uh, driveway culverts on Sligo Road. So, my understanding is that... Um, Excuse me, that's one of the possibilities that we might think about using the money in excess of the pipe contract to do. So, right. have you changed your mind about that? No, but I, I, after I spoke with you last week about the, about the contract, yes. there's not as much as I expected. Yes, I, I, I know. Yes, so. I, I had it. I had the number. You did, yeah, you were. Right. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I was correct. I did get prices on piping. And it's not that expensive. It's about hundred dollars a twenty foot section for culvert. Installing it ourselves is just we gotta be here for work anyway. Sure. So that doesn't make you know right. I mean it'll involve paving sometimes, so that'll be bring a cost in if it if we have to affect somebody's driveway. Again, I don't know how many there is. If oh, Well that, that that's know. why we'll keep it on this yeah. until you have time and you're gonna be busy for a while, I think, once they yeah. start. But when you're when you are at time, you can see how much of Sligo you're going to do and how many driveways. I don't know how long it's. You know, it's, ditching takes some time. So it's a slow process, especially yeah. with a backhoe. You know, you usually do an excavator and you can move right along. But okay. uh, we, you know, we can do it. It's just
just going to take a little time. Right, but we'll need we'll need to get in touch with homeowners. Oh yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, where it affects their property, we shouldn't have to if it's affecting the ditching. The ditching is in the public way, but the 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 drive. The, if we install a driveway culvert, oh, yeah. they uh, have to maintain it. Right. I, so I definitely, if, before we do any driveways, that would be doing. But I, guess I think we still have the right to do it, George. I I I, won't, I think it's because it's the public way, so I think we have the right to do it if we think it's good for our road. But as a matter of just yeah, right. Just just good. No, no, I, I wouldn't be doing any driveways until yeah. I mean we got to get along the road going before we get to yeah. that point anyway. The road's okay. kind of so I'll just just keep it there because I know yeah. it's something that you're you're thinking about. Yeah. Uh, the Lamprey truck sale. So this is really about having to find uh, municipal solid waste in the demo hauling by June thirtieth. So is how is that piece? We could I think we need to sit down with Triano. Okay. We got a quote for them for almost a hundred dollars less than shipyard or anybody else. Okay. They're out of Portland, but all these equipment's maintained at Atlantic and stuff like that. And uh, we called up here. They do act, and that's how we got hold of them. Yeah. We had, uh, we've had them out to our transfer station just uh, one day giving us, I don't know what we were thinking of doing. Just Very doing nice family-owned company. Yeah. Uh, seemed like a good... Doing the trucking, they were 225 I think, they came in at, and it was 295 or higher for the rest. Yeah. And there's no surcharges for them until it goes over $5 a gallon. Okay. Be a fuel okay, but right now they're not doing right fuels. Now, right. and that's you know. Yeah. Okay. But I think you know we. I think it's worth looking into because of that. that Do they it's... now? When we were using the company before Shipyard, the name of which escapes me right now, but they're out of Manchester. We had a, okay. Pinard. Pinard. Yeah, right. Pinard's not interested in transporting to waste management. Oh right, right. They correct. So that's why you know, they were going to. We had signed a contract with them, right. and so when we went to shipyard, they said we don't do contracts; it's just month to month. So, did did that come up with Triano? Are they expecting a contract or? No, I I don't think so. He just he uh, Ed told him it'd be probably hauling once or twice a week. Yeah. And he just that's what the price was was two twenty five. Well, oh. yeah. If you could find out or have Caroline find out if there's a contract involved, because of course that will need to come <coughs> right. to the board, and the board will have to sign it before we right. can actually. Well, that's, no, that was his pricing. So I mean, that, you know, we can talk with him and see what he had to offer. I mean, even going to the, I mean, demo. I mean, anyway. shipyard. Yeah, what shipyard is currently doing? Yeah, I, I ask him. And I mean, we're renting a dumpster now. We have two extra dumpsters. <laughs> we don't need to be renting a dumpster f from anybody. Yeah. Now we so, have to. And shipyard is, we're not getting a surcharge, both a fuel surcharge and we're paying additional for the recycling because, because of the, right. more trash. So now, now the recycling piece may be the same for Troyano because, it, you know, they're facing the same issues. But I don't, right. I don't know that. So and and I, I think that's going to be nationwide, yeah. Because it's collapsing at the yeah. moment. China is no longer it's accepting. It's more garbage and people aren't rinsing stuff out. Yeah. Stuff. It's, it's more garbage than they're getting out of it. Yeah. So. so it's difficult. So, so when you, and I get that, but there's some, there's some things that you just cannot get right. clean. Right. So does that go in waste? I'm not in, up to that. You know, I'm not. Well, I mean, you can't put it in recycling. So what are you going to do with it? I mean, there's those the municipal solids. Then, that, then it goes yeah, into it waste. But I mean, like I'm, I, you, you know what? I think, to be honest with you, I think a lot of this recycling is it looks good on the road. Yeah. The recycle truck goes up, but I've seen the recycle truck in some of the go right to the landfill. You know, it's, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's like coleslaw container. I mean, I just rinse it out. Mm -hmm. You know, not soap. I mean, not using soap in the water, but I make sure there's no pieces right. of Right, right. Like peanut butter. Peanut butter. I mean, you could be putting boiling water in that for two days straight and it won't be coming out of it. Right. I mean, and clean I, like it I should be. I don't know, you know what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of that stuff you can't get out. Well, yeah. it just, it just so, is so thick and whatever. And, it, and it's hard to know. So I, yeah. for peanut butter jar, I do put a little bit of soap in hot water and let it sit there for a while. Then I shake it up, put the cap back on, shake it up. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, a, so, it's a process. It's, it's a, a process. It's a process. But uh, I can, we can get a hold of them and talk with them and get a bring them in and talk with them or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and... Uh, you know, after we get the important thing is to get the the 
the municipal solid waste and the demo hauling in place. But certainly we can say, and by the way, at some point we may want to talk to you about our recycling as well. Right, because I mean, now shipyard does the demo plus our it. Ship, no, the demo, the demo goes to the, my, my understanding is demo and municipal solid waste go to the landfill. But it was hauled by But it was all hauled by uh, the truck okay. that, and that, and that is now being hauled by shipyard. Okay, so shipyard, that's the part that we need is just the demo and the... The demo right. and municipal solid waste. Okay. That's what, what we're going to lose as a... I thought someone said that shipyard hauled our demo and uh, recycling. It's just the one I'm okay. Just the recycling. Now, right now, they're doing everything. Right. Right, but yeah, no, the land, our contract with Landfield, with Turnkey, allows us to bring municipal solid waste and our demo okay. stuff. Okay. So okay. Still, it's, the price of hauling is not going to change with Triano on that, so, yeah. but, you know, like you said, we, if, if he wants a contract, then we'll bring that up, but I'll, we'll mention it to him. Okay. So, yeah, you know, absolutely. if there is a contract needed or whatever. Okay. Excellent. Um, Landfill annual post closure report. We have it here. Mike, Mike said he would sit down and work with you on this, or Ed, or somebody. I don't know if he's had the opportunity, but no, we we looked at that. I mean, basically, I don't know, like from the previous years. Well, we don't think we've ever filed it. Well, so you might. It you was due March thirty first. So we do have to look at it too. Well, yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I would suggest that Caroline try to get a hold of either Ed Jansen or uh, Al. Uh, die on mm -hmm. and ask them if they can help us with this. I don't think they ever filled it out either, but they may be able to answer some of the questions that we simply cannot. So, or if I'm gone as it a follow-up, because we're still using the same transfer station. I mean, it's, and, and we had a same, land, we had a landfill, yeah, right, right, but, but there's a whole process in the. In I know, but there's no. I don't see there's no test wells or anything over there, is there? There was. Was there? I oh, thought there was. I don't know. I don't know. And Jansen's the one that can answer those questions. Yeah. Because he was, he did the whole process, you know. So, I, 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 I believe there was test wells and they did it for a year. Charlie, were you on it on the budget committee back then when we, when the landfill was going on? Didn't they have test wells? Do you I, remember? I, mean, I think so. I think, I, I'm almost positive yeah. they did. You know, I mean, some of the questions they made just Well, you, you don't know unless you're right. here. Yeah. Or unless, so the first time we fill it out is going to be the hardest. Right. And so uh, maybe maybe you should, if, if you don't mind, contact Caroline and ask sure. her yeah. to bring Ed in or somebody yeah. who was okay. here at the time yeah. to help fill it out because he was highly involved in it. Ed Jansen was. Okay, then, you know, then he was the one who organized the whole thing. Let's, let's, let's so try let's Ed that. first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, road surface management system. So I, as you know, because I, I copied you, I believe, and I think I copied yeah. the board. I checked in with the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. And so there's a two-step process to using their system to, to update what we've been using. And the first is assessment of the roads. And so the first time, we were a pilot site for the software. And so that an SRPC staff person was going out assessing our roads. And, but now, we're no longer a pilot. And so what the former exe retired exec executive director told us is that we, you know, there would be a cost for this. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, nobody knows the probes like George and Ed. So what my thought is, is, be is after they get trained, and, and it's Colin, I think, who's, who's Colin Lentz, who's at SRPC, who you might hear from in my absence, or maybe not. And, but Caroline is also on the contact list. Mm -hmm. And what I said is don't don't let my absence hold anything back. So if he can train you because you and Ed, just because he may be there may be something new in the program that says we want to, we want the assessors to look for this. And it may not be something that you would take a note of. Maybe how many driveways. I don't I'm just making things up. I mean I, I went out in Berwick and rated the road one to five and which road Right, but they're, they're doing more. Yeah, they're oh, doing spidering, they're doing, you know, their characteristics. Is it spidering? Yes, the roads are all little blocks. Yeah, yeah, whatever the terms are. So, so there just be maybe some characteristics that they would want you to look for. You know, maybe like one hour meeting. You know, it can't right. be forever because it's roads, and you know roads, and 
you would sure have more experience with roads actually than Colin does, because he knows it from a planning perspective, but not so much from a... So, so I have checked with them. It's likely that we won't be able to sit down to actually update our what we're going to want to do until sometime in July. Okay. Possibly even August. By the time we get the project done, it'll be July either. Yeah, so, or, or even August. But I would like to have it updated. I'd love to have a public hearing. And then, of course, you know, if all that stuff goes into our 2019 budget. So that's the update on the road service management system that we often call just the 10 year road plan. And, you know, if, if they can't, if they aren't ready, to, it, if there's yet another delay, we'll just use the spreadsheet that we have. I want to look at the guy. i got to look at that a little bit closer and see where, which roads are what. And see, I mean, there's some roads that are probably better than some now. Absolutely. Sure, things change. But the, what, what, what you see in that Excel spreadsheet is different from what you're going to see when we sit down with an SRPC person. They've actually got the, the raw, I, I can't look that way, but they've got, they've got the roads by segments. And uh, they will ask you, us, but it will be you, and, you know, an input from that if you want that to be part of the process. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, is this, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to, is this, uh, like when we did Bear Road. So, so one of the first things we did was Bear Road. And we actually did the first year of Bear Road before we had this road service management system. So we did, and we did about a little more than half, I think. And we put a binder code, and we knew we were going to finish the rest of it the next year. And so, so the next year uh, was also the first year we started planning. And so we, or maybe we had already finished the whole thing, but the final code, whatever. He said, okay, so now you've got Bear Road all finished. When are you going to have to attend to it next? And so it's on our plan. It's somewhere in 20-something it says, uh, uh, you know, ceiling, and and somewhere. So it's so so. We don't just plan the big thing, but also once we. Future maintenance. Yeah. When when what are you going to do next? When do you want to do it? How long will it take? You know, how long will that be? Here's another street, and you say, oh no, it's a pretty good condition. I think we just need to overlay it. So that's what they do. You know, so they go through mm -hmm. and they talk to us about what it is that we think. I'm using we, you know, the royal we, whatever you know. I think we want to do for that road, and and as you said, the 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 sequence of events as we laid them out then may be much different. And because well, there's going to be traffic on your roads. I mean, there's, there's and there's Oak, there's Oak Street because we realized at some point after we had done that, the Oak Street is not on that list, and the reason it's not is because the state has the whole thing going to Dover. And so when S SRPC was the generator of the data, they get their data from the state and blah, 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 and it didn't occur to us that Oak Street wasn't on it. So we have to put Oak Street on it. Right. And... That's going to jump up ahead of you. That, yeah. But I, you know, as I said already in the conversation with John Storer, I've told him we can think about some cost sharing, soft dollar cost sharing, you know, not hard money, soft dollar cost sharing this year and or next year. But the earliest, the absolute earliest we can think about having money is 2020, because next year we are committed to finishing what we started at, at um, Heritage and, and Lowe's car. So, but so Oak Street is going to have to be on that list, Absolutely. and it may it may come up in 2020 based on the other things that we see. I don't know. I know. One thing they were talking about oh, just overlaying that road because. I guess they're still talking about replacing the bridge. I don't know. That the bridge is the state's bridge. John said, he's, I don't know if you've ever met him yet. He's, he's, a, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a nice man. He's a funny man. He's, I met him on, he was from Rochester. He was on the Seacoast Stormwater Coalition. And you know, he was saying, you know, there are holes in the bridge. He says, I don't know, how do you fill holes in a wooden bridge? You know, he's like, wood buddy? You know, I, seriously. I know. Seriously, yeah. I go over it every single day. Yeah, and he said, how do you, how do you repair that? And and they, you know, I think they're talking to the state about whether the state is going to come up to the plate to fix it. But, you know, clearly, you know, John didn't say anything definitively. But, you, you know, Dover, it's a it's a major yeah. lo local route. Yeah, totally. And so if the state... I mean, it's already down 
downplayed with uh, tonnage on the bridge. So. Yeah, right. And then, so, and still, now, nobody now, so you're still seeing the trucks and stuff over it. So whether Dover decides to do anything on that bridge by itself, it, it, we, have, we have no, we gave up all rights of ownership to that we, uh, bridge. We took a ride across there today, actually, and our side of the road isn't in too bad a shape right I, now. I was, every time I go over it, I say the same thing, that we did a pretty good job. <laughs> you know? Well, but. we, us and Dover did that this winter, and yeah. that our side told it up a lot better than yeah. this. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, there's going to have to be something yeah. in there. Pretty so, soon. so if... So again, uh, I haven't heard back from John Story since he got a hold of me last week, and I said I'm not going to be around after yeah. June 8th. So I said, you know, I think you need a, a meeting to figure out if there's cost sharing that we can do, or what you want to do with if there's something you want to do this summer or next summer, and that a board member should be there, and you and Caroline. Now, if that's it, my, if the board member can't be there, I think Caroline should be there. Mm -hmm. But I prefer to have a board member there, and so then you could decide whether you thought it would be good to have Caroline come along or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it would be for sure. You know, because she kind of has also a kind of a global idea mm -hmm. of, of budgets and mm -hmm. uh, resources and stuff. So that will may or may not, you know, again, you know, heads of DPW are busy people. So uh, I don't know if this will pop up back up on his list such that he wants to do something this summer, but if it happens while I'm gone, he knows that yeah. uh, he has to contact, a, a, I think, a broader, he can't just contact me. Um, and then the, this item about grading dirt roads versus cleaning catch basins, that came about, George knows why, He's already, we've already had this conversation. Somehow John Storer heard from one of his supervisors that, well, they could maybe they could, uh, you know, work on our dirt roads and regrade them. You know, you know, use their grader and regrade them, and we could do their storm drains or something like that. And can I sell grader? That's what I was thinking. That's what I, I saw. Said, so I saw. yeah, so so <laughs> we okay, so, so we in fact that. I thought well maybe we have a piece of equipment that does a good job at grading. <laughs> I don't know, but the answer is no. We we don't we don't. So, uh, and I don't know why there's a quid pro quo. Here, if I would have thought we would work on dirt roads and they would fix all of Oak Street, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, it's nice to have these kinds of uh, collaborative efforts. Yes. I just don't know what we can provide or help and what they can do in return. Like I said, the only thing I know about a grader is the one that I designed to do the shoulders, and yeah. if that could be used by them, then. We could work then you have so, then we have something to offer, so that will be something to mention to them at that meeting. But I mean, that's saving us a ton of money on these projects we're doing. So the the last thing on this item is is not a sure bet. I'm just it's uh, Caroline put it here, I guess, just because uh, I wanted to make sure. I don't know that we're doing a drop box. The board hasn't decided on that. But if we put some kind of a drop box in front of town hall somewhere, would the highway department be willing to? dig the post and cement it in and, or do whatever. I honestly believe it should be on the top step where that drops down on the right. Look, I mean on the left looking at it. It's out of the way. I, I don't know the answer to that. We haven't we haven't decided. They decide to do that. It, you know, and so so we'll talk about that. Right. But my own personal feeling if we decide to do it is that the, our I want our chief of police to be involved in what is the safest, most secure spot right. for it. So yeah, there's no problem in us installing it. Right. That's, not that, sure. that's why it's here. But if it's not down below, we should. I'm going to make an arrow because we we need to talk about that as a board. All right. I don't have anything else. Uh, anything, Denise? That nothing. Okay. Okay with me. All right. So Wednesday. Good luck Wednesday. Have fun. Yeah. That's the other. Oh, I do have one more. Do I have to babysit these guys the whole project? Or show up occasionally during the day and make sure. I mean, those, these guys know more about roads than I do. Just general oversight. Okay, that's what I mean. Because we, we've got things we could be doing yeah. besides. I mean, we're going to be there flagging. You know, know, if you show up randomly, but, and that's, you have to be there flagging. So somebody has to be there right. flagging too, yeah. whenever they yeah, need. Yeah, we're going to use, you know, yeah. the guys on the transfer station, yeah. they do the class, yeah. and then they. So, you know, I mean. I mean, well, I mean, I say if they show up randomly. Oh, 
Yeah. We will be somebody around. I mean, yeah. it's just, you You're going to be in contact. Yeah. You're going to be able to be in contact. Yeah. 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 So, that's a yeah, job. That's, that's what they're, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they built, you know, I mean, you know if they're doing something wrong right away. And mm -hmm. They get a contract to fulfill, and that, I don't think they're going to do anything wrong anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, this was, um, you know, the, there have been some companies mm -hmm. that we've had uh, that have responded to our RFPs that we were, we did, you know, when we checked references, they they were not good. The pipe was not one of, did not fall into that category. So, but still. Oh good. no, I, yeah. oh, I, I'm not saying not to be yeah. there. I mean, yeah. but they don't. No, I would say they don't require constant babysitting. So, mm -hmm. so use your best judgment, George. Oh yeah. Well, we'll be around to make sure things are going all right. Right. So have fun. Right. And let's let's hope that that roller coaster. Yeah, I'm hoping good. this. We you know they down. We'll find out it's just. We don't have to take down too deep to find that. Yep. Okay, hope so too. Take right. care. Yep. Night. I did get your email. And I did check that out. All right. Um, so I want to thank you. I just wanted to go back to Building Inspector Code Enforcement. So Tom has been writing some letters, and we did forward the letter along the one that we decided to forward along to our town council. We didn't do that. So, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to make that uh, update. Um, I don't have anything to say about fire. I don't think. Uh, nor police, so we can just go right down to uh, our own section. So budgets. Uh, let, let's let's do the second one because it's easier. So 2018, uh, we I've given you this is not there because we've already done it. So I've given you the CIP, and you'll get back in touch with me with questions. And I've also given you the 2018 budget that can be used as the basis for the default budget that, mm -hmm. that we have to produce. And we let the all the people involved in budgeting to get back to us by September, mid, to, right? yeah, mid yeah. to late September. All right, 2019. So we got an email, board did, from our tax collector asking us to consider uh, not doing the re not doing the resident tax anymore and or not doing the property inventories. So um, so I asked Caroline when a, a few questions and but the important one for me is by, by when in a year do we have to make a decision for mm -hmm. the following year? So for the inventories we will get a letter in like July or August from the state because they actually print them for us and they'll say do you want to continue? Do you want to do this again? and how many inventory cards should we print. So we'll need to be ready by July or August to answer that question. The resident tax, uh, excuse me, we think it follows the tax year. Uh, so if we, for, if we decided, for example, not to collect it in 2019, what, you know, we, would, we could choose to stop it at 1231, right? So we'd, we'd get all the money, the anticipated revenue that we thought we would get in, in 2018 and 2018. And then, and then just, if we chose, stop it in 2019. But what, and what would happen is for those three months where there might, there might be a, some money, she would, uh, she, our tax collector would do a, an abatement. So it's just like an accounting thing. And then we would be completely out of the business. So we don't have to, so we don't have to decide Either one of those, right this very minute. Um, I I've been thinking about them, and the first thing that pops into my mind is the lack of revenue. But with regard to the resident tax, um, as Caroline pointed out, she says, "Well, uh, other than the fact that residents are not, they don't like them, is what you know, and and we are the last of two towns." I don't remember the other, the second town. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a lot of paperwork for, for what our residents are paying us one way or the other. So if it removes the revenue from the revenue side, it will add, you know, something to, on, to the tax rate, right? If, when we, when we get around to that, whatever that is. So it really is just, we're taking away, if we decide to do this, a paper process that 
you know, maybe uh, it's not worth the, the combined effort on our part, on our residents' parts, to write out these little $10 checks. And so I've been just recently thinking along that line. So I don't know if you had any initial thoughts on that. Well, if, you, if you're going to put some kind of a dollar amount in to the, the taxes, then your renters aren't paying anything. It's all, it's all going to be on your homeowners. Yes, that is true. Okay. That's true. So that would be kind of like yep. one thing. I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, I think it's the pain, to be honest with you. I mean, I just okay. think, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I just, that's think what it, most I just say. don't think it's worth it. I think it And that's obviously causes... what every community, any every yeah. municipality in the state of New Hampshire, except for Rollinsford and... Do you remember the one I said the last time? I can't remember which Holderness, I don't think it started, it wasn't Holderness. It wasn't anything locally here. But no, it yeah. wasn't around here, yeah. it was somewhere else. So, uh, you just never want to lose revenue in one aspect, but. Right, you know. so we would have to, so, so I, I've been thinking, if, so if we had as our kind of like guideline, uh, sort of trying to keep within 2%, you know, we could figure out how much, over, if we didn't quite make the 2%, how much of it was due to the, you know, well, instead of paying your $10, you're paying another, whatever it is, 10 cents per, or 5 cents or 2 cents mm -hmm. per thousand. And, you know, that's how we would, would, would explain it. It's, um, it's just a different way to raise a, what is essentially a tax and obviously no other... But it's, it's part of your registration, so why couldn't that be applied to registrations of vehicles, and why, why put it on the tax bill? So, I'm sorry, say that. Okay. We're talking I about the residence tax. No, I, yeah, yeah, but residence tax, you, you have to, you, if you don't pay the residence tax, you can't register your vehicle. That is true. Okay. But so you're supposed to pay your resident tax whether you have a vehicle or not. It's just oh, that that's, okay. to, that. that's okay. the sort of carrot and stick. Okay, all right. Uh, as it turns out, you know, what is the likelihood of somebody not having a vehicle? And people over 65 are exempted. Okay. And I think so, and people under 18. So. I just always associated it with yeah. registration because that's when they get you. That's when they get you. Because, <laughs> right, that's the carrot and stick. They, they, it's, um, the state did pass that statute. Yeah. If you do, have a, uh, you do use that, then it has to... You, can enforce the not registering the vehicle, they haven't made the resident tax. Mm -hmm. But it's a pain in the tush mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the way around. There's a lot of, you know, people have to write checks, we have to process them, we have to deposit them. And so, uh, and I think the resident tax, I, I, I don't have the budget in front of me, but um, I think it was th that particular one was maybe 13000 in our this year's budget. So, so it's just something to think about. Yeah. yeah. The inventory, uh, we get probably an equal amount of money from the inventory as a tax penalty. Cause here's where we get the money. Oh, you get it because they don't file. They don't. Yes. Which, it. yeah. So my my, I always feel bad about this because it's like a sleazy way to raise money. Mm -hmm. You know. People don't read that. They don't read the fine print. They get this little thing. They don't realize it, and then they get we hit it with them at tax time. And so I've I've never um, when I realized that I've never particularly enjoyed that tax. But again, it's about you know about the same amount. I can't remember exactly which you know ten thirteen thousand in uh, in revenue and. So that again, that would have to be spread around the, the, the community, but it would be one other probably annoying little thing that um, could be could be spared the residents to do. And the, the they don't take the census, or they do take the census, but it does it doesn't have any impact on the school. I was really surprised to hear that because I thought that filling was, out this form, I mean, got to do it so they know what you know. And then finding out that the school doesn't even get it, get the, the information. Yeah, yeah there's no, there's yeah, no. I was surprised by that. Cross communication, and apparently never has been, and they are no longer asking about animals, so it's not helpful yeah. for so, that. I guess it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So we can look at that when it, when the, that letter yeah. comes in and be thinking about it. We yeah. need to, we'll need to be ready to answer that. 
Um, so the first one we'll need to try to figure out is the inventories, because the state will be asking us in July or August okay. uh, if we want to continue with them and how many we want. Um, and do you send it to them? To the state? No, we no. They print them out for us, or they. Wait a minute. Let me think about this. They. I don't know. I don't, I'm just thinking that it, it's, all, it's always hoo ha for, for for yeah. absolutely nothing if they're not even going to. Yeah, the it's state. always hoo ha. And you, the other thing is, have you done anything to your property? And you, you know, we've got we've we've really done a lot. I think good work at building up consciousness about building permits mm -hmm. and the necessity mm -hmm. for building permits. We just put out another reminder, mm -hmm. you know, we have the eyes and ears of the emperors are out there, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which is not a bad thing, no, you know, no. um, and so, you know, I think, it, you know, there are pros and cons to each of these, but I think, um, I, I can't say that I'm Absolutely leaning towards getting rid of both of these, but I'm giving it serious. I'm giving personally giving it serious thought. So, well, especially from the inventory, if it if it's not if, doing if much of anything it's other than trying anything, anything, but trying to trap somebody. Yeah, to, and that's going to get yes, the exactly. penalty yeah. put on and there. I you don't just even know. Don't, I just yeah. don't like you know. That's really that's what that's what it is. That's where we get the money from it. Because yeah. somebody has to read the fine print, or they they you know if we get busy. If they get injured like me and my home inbox is like, I don't even know it's at the bottom of it anymore because I haven't been able to attend to it. You know, and so then tax time comes and they've got this penalty and maybe they notice it, maybe they don't notice it, I don't know. But it just seems a little sleazy to me. Mm -hmm. It so, is. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. For sure. Um, Post-meeting chores. So management response. I don't know if you've had time to look at, at what I wrote. Um, I sent a okay. I sent it out a couple of weeks ago, I think. So this is the the response that I wrote oh. to the auditor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't read that. Okay. So you and Mike can talk about it, and you can either decide that you like what I wrote okay. or you don't like what I wrote. If you like what I wrote, um, then we can just. I was know. okay with it. Yeah, I was. I was okay with it, but Mike probably should. Yeah. Yeah. He'll, he'll, yeah. I'd like to get his yeah, input. Yeah. So we'll. But if he comes back, clearly I'm okay with it because I wrote it. Yeah. So if the two of you are okay, on. one of the things that you might do is take a look at the thing about getting the cash registers. Yeah, that's kind of. That's kind of. I mean, they're talking. That's pricey, isn't it? Well, that's what I mean. I don't know. So yeah. I have no idea. So. You know, maybe somebody could do some scouting around about that. Okay. Because um, I would, ha I would imagine it would have to be a locking one or a code. I don't know much about cash registers, but they must have a code that you maybe, can get into maybe. it in order to use it. Or yeah. Something. I mean, if it's out, it's out, and they're talking about the, the highway well, department. Well, and then there are here. two slots. Yeah. Right. So we can this one is about, more secure. We can clearly. think about them differently. So yeah. it, it might be easier here. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't like the money. Sort of, it's kind of out in the open, even though it's. It is a secure location, mm -hmm. it's still, and he thinks, you know, at the end of the day, it provides a better uh, audit trail of what well, you've done. Because you can have your tape yeah. to compare it. Yeah. So, with the transfer station, he wanted to do something. So, he also said, just do checks. checks. And, that boy, I, I don't know how we would do that. Mm -mm. Well, I mean, probably... 75% of the people don't use checks anymore, that, you know, yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. Which they use a debit card. Answer something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's not the norm anymore. And I called Lee, New Hampshire, because yeah. Jody, when she was doing some work at the transfer station, she had gone to pay a visit. She loves Lee Transfer Station. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a really, they do a lot of good stuff there. And and they, she came back saying, they have a kiosk. And so... You say, okay, I've got a TV, and they say, okay, it's going to be whatever it is, $5, $10. Mm -hmm. And so they go to the kiosk, and they put in either cash or their credit card or whatever and get a $10 ticket, mm -hmm. prints out $10. And so so the kiosk manages the money and, in varying amounts. Mm -hmm. And so that I said, well, that, that, that sounds like a cool idea. So I called the, the uh, town administrator uh, back back when I was starting to think about to the responses to this, mm -hmm. to the management letter. And she said, you know, we're thinking of getting rid of it. The cost of maintaining it 
is higher than we thought it was going to be. The tickets, you know, the, the cost of keeping the tickets in there and mm -hmm. uh, paying for the, the specialized printing or whatever it is. She said, we're thinking of removing it. So I said, okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we made some steps a few years back because it was a significant finding uh, and uh, on the audit, uh, on the, as part of the audit, so we, you know, we get receipts, we, you know, they give out receipts, they've got a book, and every, I don't know how often, every Monday, Jeff used once to come on Monday, yeah, yeah it comes once a week. and they sort it out with Caroline. So, so they hold it where? They, the they, they hold it there, I believe. So I think that's why. Really? I think that's in the highway barn, right? Not in the little. I have no idea. Oh, it wouldn't be in the sheds. It, would it must be in the highway barn or something. You can, we can ask. I don't know the answer to that. But that could be why Tom was suggesting that's a that's <laughs> cash register. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. If you think that's the only scary thing you'll discover in the next three years, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> All right. So. But, but those are things that, you know, yeah. if you're talking about, if Mike, too, we can think about what does this mean for for next book? Which of these things are do we think we can work on? In a vegetarian. Right, yeah. 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 Okay. I don't remember myself what all of them were, but. Yeah, th those, I, I mean, know. Things like the purchase the cat orders, cat. you know, it's it's just trying to keep our department heads on top of well, that's we really a process. Need to put it out there that they cannot buy before they get a yes. PO. Yes. Because there, there's been some violations in my time, so. It's really. a, it's a finding every year. It's on a, it's on a material finding. Yeah. It's on you know so, but it's 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 been there every year. Cause it's been there. All right. Uh, so that's B. Uh, C. We're tabling that because Michael Mike's the one that's been working. Mm -hmm. So we'll discuss that. We're tabling D. Well, D one, the general services agreement. I didn't hear back from Aaron, and as you know, uh, uh, George is waiting to hear. So the general services agreement, we still haven't signed yet because they're, we just want to iron mm -hmm. out those insurance questions. Mm -hmm. And then we don't even have a, a task order either mm -hmm. that would fall under that. So we'll have to work on that. But we, we haven't heard. So, so the other thing, number two, is I think the board's been copied on this whole thread that, was, that went on like just today or maybe starting over the weekend. I don't know what. But there's a grant opportunity from the state that is helpful to for clean water. I thought at first it was just um, for water treatment plants, but it's not for storm water mm -hmm. as well. And so John Jackman, who's an engineer at uh, Royal Tanner, has uh, you know said, well, you know, you, are you guys considering the the um, there's a deadline of June 15th. There's a program where you can you can either get grants or get a, a loan that is um, entirely forgiven. So you have to put the money up up front, but they will pay it all back. The state will pay it all back. I don't know exactly what the the time is. Maybe within a year. I, I'm not really sure. But uh, he he said that they would write the pre-application letter. The deadline is 6:15, and I said. I said, this year, six fifteen. Yeah. This year, yeah. He he said he would do. It's a pre. Um, it just it's like a, a, a notice of intent. Oh, okay. It just says yes. We're thinking of putting in a, a the grant application itself would be due the end of December, if I recall. So, but they want to know. I don't know why, but they would like to get an idea how many people are thinking of this. What are they thinking of doing? So, uh, my own thought. I'm not going to be around here when. And I don't know, this may go nowhere. He may, because I I'm done, I can't, I have to start stopping mm -hmm. because I'm just not going to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I think he would like the town, or I'm just sort of guessing, to buy an, uh, or license an asset management system that Royal Tanner has developed, which may be wonderful, but it may not be what we need most of all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it would be, if this comes in, if, I, if, if a letter comes in, this pre-application, 
it'll be up to you, you like to decide. I mean, there's no commitment, really. It just says you're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Or you can just say, well, I don't know, we don't even want to think about it. <laughs> so, and I'm fine. I'm not going to second guess. Whatever the two of you yeah. decide okay. is fine. That's what it is. If we're going to, if we're going to do the pre-application, the deadline is 6.15 and what, there's no cost for him, he said, to do it. To do okay. it. Okay. There would be some cost if we needed their help to do the actual grant. Okay. But that's the one that's due at the end of December. Okay. Uh, all right. Family Fund Day Insurance. So I wanted to have some overall kind of conversation with Caroline on insurance, and uh, but I realized that my stamina was general, whatever was not going to allow me to do this. But but she really would like you to call her about Family Fun Day, mm -hmm. and it may be that what we did last year we won't be able to do in quite the same way this year. So maybe the sooner the better that you talk to her about this. Okay, I thought she was going to be here tonight actually. She she was, and then. Uh, I may have been the one responsible for telling her not to, and then she said, make, just make sure Denise gives me a call. Okay. I thought you were a 501c3. No. Did you, was that? A, REF is. Rollins Education Foundation is the 501. And we are the garden, we, we, the yeah. other, my other but half. family days and. Arch um, is, we, uh, the garden club is. Yeah. I mean, Did you consider it's a, it? It's a big it's undertaking. A pain, it's pain, a big pain, undertaking. Pain. I mean, I will if it's going to. If I would, I mean, obviously I can't do it for this year. Um, I would consider it if it's going, if I'm going to gain anything from it. I mean, I, I don't know what I'll gain from it, as in being it. Yeah. But my understanding on the insurance was, and that's what we did this last year, that we were covered because we are, we are doing a town event. I think that's the piece you need to revisit with Caroline. Okay. There may have been a misunderstanding when she talked to Primex about exactly what a town event was. Okay. So, because the only thing that, I mean, the fireworks company has their own insurance. Okay. So that's, take that out of the picture, you know, it's really just what we do at the Legion in the ballpark and on the on the grounds. And I mean, it may be yeah. sufficient to have event day insurance. I don't know how expensive that is. I don't know how expensive it is. So, I don't, yeah, I mean, we can look into that. I mean, I can look into talk, it. Just I'll talk to talk to, yeah. talk to Caroline. All right. Um, the drop box may be, uh, I'm going to wait for that till the end for right now. Let's see what else we can take care of. So there was a, David Waters sent a reminder letter, and I, my response was to Caroline, reminder. So I guess he's holding office hours this week. Well, they he yes. sent out he sent out a couple of emails. Okay, uh, I must have just. Yeah. there must have been one. I it was a, it was a little while ago. Okay, I had it in my email file, but um, yeah, he's had. I can't come. I mean, it's no. He's yeah. he's just it's here for constituents. It and so the town office is open at that time. Yes, so yeah. it will be. Available. You know, we've right. done it for our uh, national reps. Mm -hmm. You know, as well. You know, Congress mostly Congress people. We usually we've never had a U.S. senator come, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I know that uh, I think Carol Shea Porter has come and uh, Gint. yeah, Gint has been here. So you know, if they're doing constituent services, then that's fine. That's a acceptable use for for the municipal building. So I just said, told Caroline, we'll just put it out on the yeah. website because yeah. you know. So poor Dave, he's, he's gonna yeah. come here and make trouble. Yeah. Sure. So there's that. Uh, we're still working on dumpsters for buildings of four or more units. Um, Tom is in the process of writing a letter. Um, there's, I know Caroline has had some conversation, or Tom has had conversation with our neighbors next door about the, pro the placement of that and paving, and so they may be taking something to the ZBA in order to do the amount of paving that they, the amount of paving that she could, she heard that they wanted to do is probably requires a variance in the ZBA. But anyway, the an actual comprehensive, a letter to a comprehensive list has not yet happened yet. Uh, all right, uh, recreation. So what do you think you might want to have Chief Dushan take care of this? Because this could oh, yes. really need to go into non uh, No, let's, no, we're happy to do you. <laughs> okay. Please, come on, we're happy. That sounds terrible, but we're happy to manage. Well, good evening. Hi, how are what you? What is this? Well, do you have a little something going on there? Well, 
I guess since you bring it up, I'll mention it. Um, the guys wanted to do a fundraiser for Officer Di Pasquale. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first of several is that the guys said, all right, let's do some facial hair. Yes. Uh, but they have to raise money and get sponsors and whatnot. So uh, I've allowed folks to, to grow facial hair. Uh, oh, is it normally not? Uh, oh, no, normally we don't Just like the handkerchief. You, you get a right. mustache, just, but just that's like, it. Just like no the goatee or anything yeah. like that. Okay. And um, so between Memorial Day and Labor Day, they can have facial hair. Okay. But they have to raise money for the officers. So. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for that explanation. So you may, you'll, you'll see some, a uh, couple of us I know, trying to grow something. Trying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to grow something. <laughs> okay. Cruises, cruises, cruises. Uh, I saw the um, meeting, I guess last, week, last week's meeting was postponed or until Tuesday. Uh, well, I, I did not see that uh, at well, the time, it was, so I was uh, not able to be here. Well, that's okay. I mean, what, there wasn't going to be a meeting, yeah. right? Because oh, okay. we were closed. Monday was Memorial Day, and yeah, normally right. we just oh, don't yeah. have it. We, well, had a, thought, so. we had a special meeting. It was, I don't even remember. What, what, we had something we had to do. Building permit. Oh, I can see. Was Lorraine. Lorraine, yeah, we were meeting. That's it. We were meeting with the town oh, about the town manager. So, okay. and any other business that came up. So it was not a real, okay. so you didn't miss anything. Okay. Well, well, the Friday prior. Yes. Uh, Cruiser 72. Um, the thermostat housing unit cracked on it. Split open. So all of the antifreeze poured out of it. Sent it to Dover as an emergency repair and uh, they, they were able to, uh, to to fix it for us. Um, they said it's going to be less than $300 for that repair. So we got lucky with that one. So I have purchased order number 1400 for the city of Dover for to repair and replace a thermostat housing unit in cruiser number 72 for $300. Is cruiser 72 um that's the. Or was that one of them that had the other other problems? That's the one that initially had the transmission issue okay. that we sent the bill's transmission and we replaced the fluid in it. Yes. Do you think that all has something to do with each other? No, I don't no? think so. Okay. I think it was just, okay. just one of those things. One of those it's things. One of those things. Regular maintenance. All right. Purchase of the fourteen hundred for rear repair and replace thermostat housing unit for Cruiser seventy two for three hundred dollars. A second that. Over. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Cruiser number is 73. I sent it over to go for an evaluation. Um, the engine light was on and there's a knocking in the, on, the, on the front end, so they found that we need to replace a ball joint in that car, use a tune-up, and there's a ball bearing in the right rear that needs to be replaced. Um, they recommended that we don't drive it in the condition that it is at this point until repairs are taken care of. And uh, they tell me it's going to be less than $500, but I put the purchase order for $500. Yep. So I purchased order number 1403, mailed to the city of Dover. To repair cruiser number seventy three ball joint ball bearing and the tune up. Is that does that affect the check engine light? A ball bearing? The I mean, tune up. Oh, the tune up. The tune up. Okay. Yes. okay, so it has yeah. nothing to do with your um, what is it usually your um, thing, your what's the thing that does? The check engine light. You, you oh, you use it something with the exhaust system. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. It, oh, no. the gas cap. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. All right. No. City of Dover, 1403 purchase order for the repair of to Cruza 73, $500. I'll second that. Okay. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 So, just to respond, I mean, you know, making it off the 500 and it, you're quite sure it's going to be less, it's fine. I mean, the, the money, we don't even encumber purchase orders. We don't have a, an accounting system that encumbers. So, if it comes in at you know, 400, that's all that's coming out of your budget. Oh, sure. just, yeah. yeah, this is just the authority so that right. uh, everybody knows that the board has actually looked at this before, which is a good thing, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Although for emer emergency, emergency work, emergency work is emergency work. Okay. Um, I, I sent you folks an email last week on the pros and cons of the, the after-hours drop box out here. Yes. Um, 
after after I sent the initial one out, yes. uh, Kate showed me the unit that she was hoping to purchase. And you know, I think if they attach that box to the building along with the stand, I I, I can't see anybody ripping it off the building. When you say um, attaching it to the building, you're like bolting it. Sure, screwing it into the building. Yeah. Into the building. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, what you would do is uh, whatever the size of the box is, you would cut the uh, the siding and bolt it right to right to the building itself. So the siding. It will, the siding will come up to the top of the box and it will look nice, you know, you see, seal it in, but the box itself will be bolted to the, to the, uh, the building itself. And then you'll have the stand, the stand, the stand will be bolted to the deck out there. So, so I think that would be and is that a little bit more difficult for someone to steal it as opposed to just leaving it on the stand someplace because then you can, you know, do this with it on the stand and, and off, with, off with it. Um, I also looked at the camera. We can also tilt the camera down just a little bit. We're not going to be able to get that wall there in the front doors, but you'll get more of a, more view of the landing itself. So, so again, well, the board hasn't agreed to do this, but sure. that would be if I were to agree to it, I would say you know, providing that Chief Ducharme has said this is where you know this is the safest, more secure way to do it. So, we'll you know we're going to have a conversation about this you know later on in the sure. meeting, and then we'll. If, if we decide to approve it, you'll probably hear from Caroline or one of us. And we may still sit on it, so I'm sure. we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll just wait until you the magic word. All right, you. thank you. <laughs> um, and the last thing that I have is building committee meeting. Building committee meeting? The space, space needs. Oh, space needs, yes, yes. I will okay. get that out this week. Okay. Yeah, and CIP as well. I know time is running out. Uh, yeah. yeah, we get into this crunch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's all I have for you folks. I mean, and, for us. Well, just a question. Has any other land idea come up? I mean, you know my concern about Silver Street. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. What's your concern about Silver Street? That it is merely adequate as far as space and that there's no opportunity for, you know, for growth or some new... Uh, new, some new regulations come around with how to manage a, re a police station and whatever that new thing is, that place wouldn't be big enough for us to do it, whatever whatever it is. Unless you went out. Well, I, I think for, if, you're, if you're just talking about police department only, yes. I think they're going to be good for another 50, 60 years on that site. Even if you had to add a small addition in the back or something like that, there's still plenty of room over there. Um, if you're talking now Town Hall, uh, as well over there, Town Hall being on the second floor, um, you know, unless you're planning on expanding the number of offices that you have up here, it, it, might, be, it might be tight. At least uh, as a, part, uh, a parking standpoint. You can certainly fill the entire second floor. But for police, floor. you feel oh, yeah. really 50, 60 years. Oh yeah, I think so. If the building is done correctly, mm -hmm. you should be able to be and not have any, any major addition to that building for 50 years. Oh, I'll be able to do that. Right, and I, I won't be able to do that. Where's that tin can? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, that, that's but, a long way to go, though. That's, right. that, that, that's uh, well, but, yeah. but certainly, if, if, you, if the town decides you put the town hall there as well, and you utilize the entire space as a second floor up there, the only problem is this parking. I think we, we we have on the diagram now somewhere around 24 parking spaces, or could we do 24 parking spaces? Could be a few more if we move the building a little bit closer to the, you know, the, the far corner, something like that. Yeah. So you could, you one, you right away you'd increase the number of parking spaces that you have here, so you'd be able to have larger meetings um, and whatnot. And not here. Great, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, I I personally. I mean, there are going to be a lot of discussions, I hope, that, and that's why it's good to get started, because I think, you know, we should have, you know, some public hearings to get some input. Uh, but the, uh, for me, it's too complicated to think about moving the town, you know. So I'm, I'm mostly concerned about the police station aspect of it. But what I, what is interesting to me is what we might do with that space or to leave down down there, and and how many parking spaces it opens up here, and uh, so I would just be curious about that. I, I don't know if you have. I mean, 
these are these are just like. Whoosh, whoosh, mm -hmm. But I'm a lot more comfortable hearing 50, 60 years than. Oh, yeah, easily, yeah. easily. Yeah. I, I I could not imagine seeing another major another major new building. And, no, you know, unless the town of Rawls all of a sudden becomes an Achilles and it just explodes. But I, I personally don't see that, you know, with the current uh, uh, rules and regulations and zoning and whatnot. That well, we you, don't have a growth ordinance. Have, I, I, yeah. I, would like to, I, I would love to see the planning board consider a growth ordinance. Yeah. We don't have one. But, I mean, but that is a consideration. Yeah. Well, you have a lot of open land here. Yeah, in, in, yeah. In the hands of And look what's and happened to Dover, where there's yeah. barely a, yeah. an open... A lot anywhere, yeah. and at some point, I know we've, there's a lot of land that's been conserved privately, but there's a lot that isn't. Right, and there's, I mean, uh, the current owners are going to sell it, but what happens when it right. when ha something happens yeah. with them and it goes to family or or it doesn't live here and yeah. doesn't want the it? Economy and, changes. Uh, there are reasons my own, why people yeah. make decisions. Yeah. So, but I mean, I mean, the only thing is, I mean, we own this land. And it will right. satisfy the police department, yeah. at least. The, and to add a, a, the land to the project. But, but Denise, that is our asset one way or the other. So we could decide to sell that, and it's in a residential area. So yeah. it might make a pretty penny. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. use that to fund the land purchase somewhere else. So well, yeah. that's the, you know, I think we'd make, I know, um, I think he sold the land, the land next door for, uh, well, he had a house on it, so that doesn't, that doesn't yeah. count. He got a good deal for the land, and that was a couple years back. He should have, should have bought it. Yeah, I know. He should have bought it, but, you know, that's that. The town said no, so we didn't, so that's the end of that conversation. Bob, can you confirm? It's Kim, Charlie Putnam. Uh, Bill Irving. Bill. Kim. Myself, a lieutenant. My, oh no, you're, you're taking Mike's place here. I'm on that. I yes, you're. That. Yeah, yeah. I was always on that. Yes, that's oh, what I mean. But I yeah. think you're the you're now on it as our ex officio. I don't think. Well, CIP for sure. Yes. But I always was. Mike wasn't on it. Oh, he he was not. No, on it. I was on it. Wasn't Mike on it? Oh wait, I'm. Oh, well, Mike was on it. Then he got off. Mm -hmm. So or, he was there as our for, yes. for the space needs. Yes. yes. Oh, Mike was on it. Oh, he was. Yeah. And Glenn was there. Oh, no, he was there. Okay, so that's so it was just Charlie Putnam. And I, I don't know. Harvey, I don't know if, if Kim. Uh, so I'm, Jody had expressed a desire as a budget committee member to be on that. I thought she did for CIP, but I will I'll look into that. Okay, so I just want to make sure I'll pull them up the minutes from the last the ones I have on file and just send it out. But I will do it this week. Okay. All right. And you're doing much better. I am doing it. I'm not perfect. Do it better. I'm not perfect, but I'm good enough to go to Europe. None of us are perfect. Well, hey. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're doing okay. For three weeks. <laughs> so, well, good for you. Thank you. Good for you. I'll have my assistive devices with me. All right, anything else for me? So, so how many vehicles are we down now? Just uh, one? Well, just the one, the, the, the 73. We're just down. But yeah, we got the other car back and forth. Uh, we picked that up last. Friday, actually. Okay, and everything's good. That's right, and everything's good. good. We did uh, about thirty-seven hundred dollars worth of work, all covered by warranty. Awesome. So yeah. Good, That's good. Great. Great. That is yeah. good. That's excellent. Yeah. Right. So in the future, uh, you know, because we really need to do something like getting the mileage down the vehicle. So yeah. you know, we're looking, considering, and we'll, we'll put forward a plan sometime during the budget process here. But either uh, you know, leasing two to get the two cars, and then pay over three years. So you're paying basically the same amount. You're getting the car sooner, or maybe even considering purchasing uh, a couple of Dover's used ones uh, in, place of, have. in place of a, uh, a new one at some point. So, because they get rid of theirs at 50,000 miles, really? and they, they sell them for about 12, 11 to 12,000 mm -hmm. dollars in that range. Yeah. So, because we're remind me again, we're trying to we're trying to. Um, Something happened a while back that got us off track of what the usual plan is. We had a car that was, a new car that was totaled uh, from a rear end collision, and uh, uh, we weren't able to replace them until the next cycle. So that left us uh, about a year and a half of uh, mileage creeping up on all the other, all the other cars. I mean, they all had high mileage to begin with, uh, but uh, now uh, all three vehicles are, are well over 100,000 miles. Mm -hmm. And 
planned, except for the newest one that we got in 2016. So, yeah. All right, so yeah, and we'll consider whatever whatever yeah. plan yeah. seems to make sense. Do they have SUVs as well? I mean, Do they have SUVs as well? Dover's going straight to SUVs, yes. For, for patrol, they, they get they get sedans, they have detectives, and okay. the chief and whatnot. For patrol, uh, straight to SUVs. So. Okay. Yeah. So you know, do some uh, math. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll have it all prepared for you. Yeah. That's Thank you. Great. You do a good job, and we appreciate that. So it's easier for us to yeah. just look at it sure. and make a decision. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the sooner the sooner we can get, I, I know we're always busy, but the sooner we can try to get plans out there to the public and see what they think about the building. Yeah. yeah. It's always helpful. All right. Very good. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Recreation. Or do you want to go okay. right to the drop box? Um, <laughs> let's do recreation. Well, let's talk about the drop box. All right. So I'm going to ask you to defer it. Okay. Because it won't be fair because I'm not going to vote for it. So if Mike is for it and you are, yeah. then I don't want it to fail because I'm not for it. Okay. So I ask you to just defer it until you come back and you Absolutely. and Mike can vote. Absolutely. Do you want to state what the, what, or do you just, and I'm at, you know. I just think it's, it's taking away from the community working with our, with our town people and it takes the personality away from it by having a drop box. I think we're doing more and more not one-on-one -on -one conversations with people and I, I just, it's losing the small town, town. small town feel. Mm -hmm. The more we push them out, the less you're going to get support because they're not being actively involved if they keep on putting something in a box. That's just, and that's just my opinion, but I, I, I don't want this to fail if you both are really for it, well, I mean, that's well, it's I just. I can say why well, I don't. I really. I don't think we had. Uh, I don't think Michael chimed in on this. I mean, here, I, here's my thought. I mean, I, I understand the. I, I do understand sort of the loss of personal mm -hmm. connection, uh, but on the other side of the coin, you know, as somebody who you know who worked, mm -hmm. like many of our town residents worked, uh, you know, there were times that back in the olden days where if I couldn't get to the bank when the bank was open or even the Saturday morning hours, you know, you're kind of stuck. So when the ATMs came around, I said, oh, big yay. So my, my thought is that no matter what hours were open, unless we decided to do 24 seven, which we're not gonna do, someone's gonna be able to take advantage of paying something in an easier, in an easier manner. You know, and if they were running, if they meant to be here by seven, and something happened and they're 10 minutes late, you know, they'll, they'll still be able to, you know, to pay their things. So that, that's my side of, mm -hmm. of that. And they're both, you know, they're both legitimate considerations. And I, I respect what you just said, we will defer it until, until I'm back and we can let uh, Kate know about that. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's go to, to, to recreation. Do we, do we want uh, Celia to come up or do you want to handle, what, what, what is your pleasure? Um. Are you here with any information? Okay. Not, okay. Not at anything. the moment. Okay. So we met last night, um, and there's a couple of things that I was um, asked to bring to the attention. One of the things is that the rec director is not getting the initial emails of things, and then she's getting copied on a follow-up. So they've asked me to make sure that the rec director is on the rec committee's um, you know that your yeah uh, the email distribution list. she's yes. only getting the replies from the committee yeah, members she's not, she's not the seeing email. the initial email to the committee right where the where is that initial e email coming from is somebody hitting a link somewhere they're coming to the rec committee via personal email accounts like somebody will send a question uh, will you do pre and post care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a person. It's a person. It's a someone here in town who's sending an email to the rec committee um, so distribution not, list, and so they think that she's she not seeing, getting that. But, but why, why is she, she seeing the replies? Well, that yeah. See, that didn't make sense. And I don't know exactly. Unless someone's adding her there. This morning, she was. She was the first one to respond to an email yeah, that came into that. the rec committee. I saw that. Yeah. It, I, I and I will double check, but I, I was looking just yesterday because. 
uh, the chair of the school board wanted to send, uh, wanted to notify the rec director of things that were happening at the school this summer, and asked me if I had her email. And I didn't, I didn't know whether it was rector, which is what it is, or I didn't rec director. So I looked, I looked it up. I think on the, I, I will double check, and I will, I'll let the two of you know. I but she might, she might want to make sure that she doesn't have them like in a spam folder or yeah, something. Yeah, she because sometimes that could be, um, you know, yes. she's not catching that. Yep. So and I didn't think about that last night, but it's, talking about it now, I kind of think, you know, sometimes it will just go in spam for some unreason. You know, Unless sometimes you have like, to put it, you have to mark it as not spam. Exactly. You have right. To mark it as not spam. Right. And so, it. If you get a chance, can you drop in line just to tell her to go ahead and check that, you know, yeah, and, and just to make sure. Um, and I will check. And the, I will check the YouTube. Check, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I will and let, just let the two of you. Yeah, that's fine. From my perspective, when I do rec committee, I add rec direct at Rollins for two. It's rec so, dir, I think, right? D-I-R, R-E-C, D-I-R. Yeah, rec dir. At, yeah. Um, so yeah. I add them in. Um, you shouldn't have to. She, she should, should be on the committee. On it, yeah. She should be. She's part of that 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 group. But I will I will double check. Okay. And I will send out a test. Uh, I'll send out a test email. Okay. And if she, see if she responds. Yep. And I will say, the rest of you just put this right in your trash. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, that worked. Because uh, we had a discussion about that last week. Yeah. Okay, okay. One of the other things that they they they're having difficulty um, getting transportation. Um, and so one of the questions was asked is, is it an option to rent a car? I don't know. I would ask uh, liability issues to the Municipal Association, but you know, the SAU has a van. That, totally that came out in another that. conversation I had with the chair of the school board. So the SAU has a van, and I said, well, huh. I totally because about for that. the teen camp, when I was for the teen camp. talking last week, right now you're looking for something smaller than a full size. Well, they're looking for something smaller and cheaper because I mean you're yeah. talking about a sixty seat van uh, bus versus you know you're looking, yeah. there's only what eight now. Uh, there were an eight passenger six, van would have been six passenger van would have been enough. Six or seven passenger van would be yeah. fine. We have the most we have signed up right at the moment was four teen campers mm -hmm. for a week and um we had how many four four, four. okay not 14 four, no, four. four. teen campers yeah yeah yep. 14 yep. campers so. um right. so four teen campers signed up so they're going to check in with cnj about a smaller bus yep. they're going to check in with feliciano and because to go through for a student who we use for Camp Raleigh is two hundred and fifty dollars a day. Right. Yeah. Ask ch check in with the superintendent of SAU fifty six, who is I think they just go to the website. I don't. Yeah. Um, it's very it's a, lame. But yeah, I mean, also um, um, Katie Krause, who is the BA now, um, might be able to answer it as well or get you an answer. Either one of them. But that's okay. that's. So anyway, I mean, I didn't think renting a car was something that they should do. No, but there could be, uh, like Feliciano, <coughs> excuse me, there could be these limos that can have smaller... Well, they had, what did she say, it was an SUV that would fit the six. Yeah, so, so, so and, and that would be an insured, that would be like... That, that would similar, be fine because right? they're holding the insurance, yeah, not us yeah. holding the insurance right. if they rent a car. Right. But so, if we go up past six, they're going they to... They're in trouble again, yeah. Well, no, we wouldn't do it alone. So. I mean, that would be that would be much more money. Again. Yeah, that would be out of our budget range, yeah. I think. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I would check with the SCU. I don't know what they use it for, but they have. Well, it's they special have. ed. It, okay, it was so. it was um, it was something that they had gotten um, through an S, um, special ed grant or something. Yeah. Or yeah, I forget and what they could, I suppose there could be restrictions too, but it could be. It could you never be. know unless you ask, and I don't know how big it is. I don't know how many. Um, Passenger holds, but it's a van usually holds at least six, doesn't it? I mean, if it's a minivan, it could be a mini, like, like a more, it's more like, like a, a mini bus, um, yeah. you know, kind of thing. I don't, yeah. I don't really know, but it I, sits in the parking lot at SAU. You can yeah. come look at it, but um, anyway, okay. So then, all right. So that was that. Um, 
I want to talk to you um, about the scholarships in non-public, if we can. It doesn't have to be right now, but yeah. um, okay, so we can save it to the I want to save it to the end. It's yeah. fine. Okay. Um, you have submitted all of your recreation grants. You have heard nothing back yet, as so far as I first, I will be getting out a um, timeline, and the first one due back is June 15th. Okay. okay. So, um, and then the, um, the rec ex officio's authority. Y yes. So, so the board last year talked about this, and... Um, Excuse me. Like uh, the question about the scholarship or whatever that you, you answered. Mm -hmm. So what I would like the board to do is, and we did this last year with Jody, is that to give you sort of the same authority level that an apartment head would have. Mm -hmm. You know, so for this, the things that you just need to check the budget, and need to check, you don't, it, it, you know, use your judgment about some things that are that need to come back to the full board. Mm -hmm. Otherwise. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's fair, and I think that you know would I wouldn't do down. anything much yeah, more I, than I, yes. Yeah. So, so I think you know we can, uh, um, you know, Michael is is not here today, but I know we did this last year. Mm -hmm. I'm very comfortable in saying to you, please go ahead and, and do that, and even for all of these grants, you know, for all of the things that happened at the beginning, the board may have to, you may have to come to the board at the end mm -hmm. for our signature. Yep. But yep. you know, some of this, uh, all of the stuff, or you know, questions about transportation that may be helpful to have a board member be part of. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be the whole board, especially because, as you know, there's a lot of tra there's a lot of traffic. Right. It's, this is a busy time. Mm -hmm. This is well, and it's still a new program. We're still kind of figuring out the, the best way to, to manage this. But so, if you just think of yourself as sort of like a department head, yep. that, that that might be a way to okay. to 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 work with the direct department. Yep, and I'm okay with that as well. Um, and there's one other thing that um, I have to be careful how I say this. Yeah, well, um, we, we can choose choose your words carefully. I am trying. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's just <laughs> there is a there's a misunderstanding okay. about their budget and how their budget works. Okay. And um, what the misunderstanding is, is, is it's mainly for the team camp, if you agree with that, right? They don't have the numbers to support it financially to what they put in their budget. However, a member of the committee stated that you have, you, it's part of the budget, you have to raise and appropriate and it gives them the right to spend it, which I do not agree with. It is true we have to raise and appropriate it. I but but the 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 sort of a general person's agreement we have with the rec committee is that this thing should be revenue neutral. Right. So if you know that you're not bringing in, you know, this if your revenue is going like this, then you have to try to bring your expenses up. Right. It could be, because even though we're raising and appropriating it, we have to raise and appropriate it. But if we don't spend it, then it sits in fund balance. So, or right. as it was stated last night, you could spend it on roads, or you could spend it on this, or you. Know, so, I, I would by authority. Yes. Yes. I, you know. However, it, it has a kind of an an opinion that because it was part of the budget. It's available to spend because the conversation last night was, do we cancel team camp or not? Because at one point, the numbers were really were not going to work. Work, and so you do have to give them notice. So I mean, the the sooner you decide whether you can go forward with this or not, because one couple of days or whatever, or a couple of weeks, there was only one person in team camp, right? One to two. One to two. Yeah. No way are you going to make the, the financial money for that week because you're talking about trips for the, all the time and you don't have the financial resources to support that. So, um, so again, the implication for the for anybody who's listening is that 
if the revenue isn't there and the rec committee goes ahead and spends it, mm -hmm. our tax rate's going up. Mm -hmm. Because our tax rate is based on not just the uh, approved appropriations, but also the revenues that we've brought in. Mm -hmm. So if we haven't brought in the anticipated revenue, then our tax rate is going to be more than what we projected it to be because of that. And also I would say that the board would look, depending on the size of the deficit, you know, the, the, the rec committee runs the risk of the board looking askance at the whole program. Not well, that's my fear. You, you my fear is if you go with, if you come across with that attitude, and not, and they're, trust me, they're working as hard as they can to get this program successful. But you have to, you don't want to affect Raleigh camp because this camp is not being successful. Right. And the whole picture of it could be at risk yeah. if, if we're not careful about how we handle going forward. And knowing that you still have time to make those decisions and be stuck on not because you've you know, you have a budget, right. concerns me. Because yes. I think it could be at risk in the next budget cycle. And the, and the, and the, absolutely. And the, and the this will, it will not be a happy situation. So Because we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars. I do know that Dean, Dean is coming tomorrow to speak to Caroline. I don't know if it, it's about the overall budget or just, you know, how do we manage Well, the Caroline had uh, asked them to ask, um, had sent out an email because she was having a hard time with reporting on this uh, sports engine or whatever it is. Yeah. So she was looking to find, she, it was her um, understanding that they were going to reconcile to make sure what the cash was coming in versus the people um, attending it and stuff. And Caroline was having a hard time getting what she needed to with the deposits. Yeah. And, and so th I think that's why she's going in. Okay. So, um, which I think is a good thing. So um, Denise, how, so, okay, so that's, that's more sort of Business process and exactly silent. Yeah, method. yeah. How do, how, so I'm concerned based on what you just said. Me too. And so what? Um, what 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 guidance should should the board be delivering some some guidance? And well, I did. I don't know if it was received properly, but I did. I stated that um, that you have to come in in a neutral budget and that's the expectation and if you don't know that this is going to work the way we should really consider bailing. thinking bailing on yeah. it. So, so we don't meet again until the 19th. So I, how's this for a suggestion? That you kind of uh, summarize what you've just said mm -hmm. in an email to the rec committee mm -hmm. that copies us mm -hmm. and say that we've discussed this, mm -hmm. the board has discussed this and the board believes that a, a large deficit in the rec committee could could uh, cause us to rethink our our confidence and our ability to, to continue to finance the. I mean that's that's what I would. Yeah, and that's I'll, true. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll right? send something to you guys, and you know you can um, before we send anything to them. You know you can. Okay. Do whatever. Yeah, and I know you're not. Yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. I know, but well, I'm just kind concerned of, about that. Yeah, I, I, kind of, I absolutely that made me very uncomfortable yes. last night because that's not my interpretation of it. Is it is? I mean, there's truth to that, but we didn't. When we talked to the rec committee, we specifically said mm -hmm. you guys have to be revenue neutral. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've got this whatever it is, ninety some odd thousand dollars in the rec committee. But we're expecting you to bring in the ninety some odd thousand dollars mm -hmm. and. If if there's something that's problematic, we expect the rec committee to try to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it had been addressed by this board. What is the art? What was the committee's threshold? And I was trying to get at that last night. Of when do we cancel the team program? Mm -hmm. And there are two committee members that are supposed to be working on that and coming up with an idea by the end of the week, so that they can. I, I, I think the issues. camp is like in the thirty thousands of dollars or something. It dropped down to fourteen thousand eight hundred. Okay, is where that team, where team camp stands right now, um, and With, without any of the grants that without any of the grants, that's our income and um, that's in the town report. Um, 
and they um, were looking at 15 campers per week to hit the break-even point, which we haven't and even reached. four. Well, it, it, it's, it, um, it's different for every week. I mean, they, they sign up for the weeks that they want to be part of it. So you might have four this week, you might have five this week, or two this week. So in the whole picture of things, they're not going to make it. I mean, I, I don't, I, you're only talking about two more weeks of sign up. I don't think they're going to make it. And I think that they really should have considered that last night. And it wasn't. I agree. Thank you. Well, and, and so in that email, you can you can encourage them to uh, make a decision expeditiously because yeah. a, a deficit of that nature yeah. is it, it's going to be huge. Yeah, that's, if they go forward with that, you know, the board does its best to try to build a budget that we project will keep the tax rate at some sort of even keel, and something like this can throw it all out of whack, and it it it. It makes it more difficult then for us to to to, to have the town to have confidence mm -hmm. in the kinds of budgets that we we build mm -hmm. and and present to the town. So we were, they were given lots of options last night of condensing the program, and forcing the kids into a smaller time, and then eliminating some of the overhead and all mm -hmm. of that. And those are all considerations that the two committee members well, hopefully will take under. them to make this decision ASAP. Right. <laughs> I just don't want Raleigh Camp to suffer for something that they're in and they're all good ideas. It's just it needs more work and try it again next year. But I, I just don't want Raleigh Camp because it was a wonderful year last year and I wanted to see it successful, go forward. Very a successful, successful enough program to build on. Absolutely. So possibly the teen camp isn't the and my understanding is very few are Rollins of residents on that, correct? I believe um, that was the case. I know the one that I picked up at the town hall and dropped off last night was a Rollinsford resident. Okay. And that one of the committee members has two children that will participate in it. Um, so I'm thinking mm -hmm. five maybe. Because um, the two that were committee members were not signed up last night. Yeah. So. But you need an, we need an average of how many? Fifteen. Fifteen. And average. average. You know, they do get that. It, because some of the committee members who haven't signed up are not doing every week. Right. And so, the committee member who signed up, who I'm counting, is only doing three weeks, I think, with their children. And the one that I handed in was only doing five weeks. Yeah. So, yeah. I would definitely say strong letter to follow is, is, yeah. is in order. Okay. I just, yeah. So, and thank yeah. you for bringing it to our um, attention. I know. I, I, I mean, I feel bad, yeah. but. You know that kind of a deficit is, yeah, and I is preventable. So because we can just say sorry, mm -hmm. we need to make the parents aware so as, as soon as, as possible. Soon as possible because they're so relying they on make other exactly. arrangements. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. And That's we don't want to leave them high and dry without That's another right. opportunity to enroll their kids. Right. In. Yeah. So I would say that's why I mean this. Mm -hmm. We should try to resolve this as soon as we can. Like this this week. Yeah. That's the hope. Yeah. Okay. To this week. Alrighty. Thank you for bringing okay. that to our. I'm, you know, I've been a bit, a bit a little concerned, so yeah. I'm not surprised to hear this, but yeah. uh, I heartily agree with your interpretation. The, it's only in that expense budget because of the agreement we have with the rec committee that the revenue is going to support it. Right. That's that was that, my right, so. that's my assumption, yes. and, and just it's, because it's there doesn't mean you can spend it. If you're not offset, knowing right. you are supposed knowing to offset, knowing that you're supposed to offset, right. right? And hopefully she gets some grants, but even if she gets grants, it's still not going to fit, fix it all. Yeah, you know. So, but she's done a great job on the grants. Yeah, you, uh, it's unbelievable work. Yes, yes. and, and it's all to the good. I mean, you're building, you know, you're building a network of connections, and mm -hmm. you know, that's a good, that's a good thing. All right. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, did we have building permits online? Table that? Uh, I'm just going to say, uh, well, yes and no. Um, so, from an overall process point of view, several years ago now, I had suggested that a better business process for building permits would be to have Tom number and log them when they come into him. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're just a blank form. Mm -hmm. And to you know, the front office, I don't think, needs to get involved. 
that it takes their time, they're asking for the contractor's name, they're, they're signing a number. So we've had some screw-ups with the numbering. Mm -hmm. There's no screw-up if Tom gets a permit that's brand new and he's got the log and he logs it in or, or he'll give it to, or he'll okay, say okay to log and give it to Salme to log it in, whatever. But it, it keeps the numbering in one person's hand mm -hmm. and it, it removes them other than from maybe handing out the form from the process. And so if they're not having to be the start of the process, we can just put these, it's a PDF, we can just put it online mm -hmm. and people can can just take it down and fill it out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not have to come. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to come. But, you know, no, I mean, but it's easy, you know, it's again, different. I mean, what, what is his hours? How often is he here? He's usually here on Mondays. Cause just one day a week? <laughs> well, he'll he'll do inspections as he needs to. Oh, but okay. I mean, as far as sitting in there and, and processing, mm -hmm. doing letters, mm -hmm. he spends a few hours here on, on Mondays. Okay. Can I ask you a personal question? Mm -hmm. Can you start a project without, if it's submitted but hasn't been? You're supposed mm -hmm. to have a building permit. Now, mm -hmm. do people start projects without building permits? Yes. And so, I myself retroactively submitted a building permit for my generator mm -hmm. when I was sitting here one night and somebody came in and asked with a building permit for a generator. I'm like, oh, you need a building permit for a generator? Mm -hmm. It's like my first year here or something. And so again, you know, if and that's why I said, well, if I as a board member don't know this, there are lots of people out there who mm -hmm. don't know that you need building permits for just about everything except a fence. Yeah. And I don't know what the rationale is for that. But I have, but I have the building permits and I have the quotes but I have a timing issue because I don't think I'm going to get back in time. That's my problem. Oh. So if I turned it in to Caroline, we have 30 days. The board does have 30 days. Well, let, let, let me just say, without naming names, uh, that the board's preference, because this is it's a probably state statute, is that, or our own ordinance, is that buildings shouldn't start without an approved building permit. However, the board's practice is that, please, if you haven't done it and you've start, you know, do it and whenever, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have not stopped people from filing it after the fact or during the fact, but the, we, we do like to see them ahead of time. It's like purchase orders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's yeah. what I will say. And then, you know, you know, people like, you know, we've seen some people. The, it's already done, mm -hmm. and you know, like, uh, and we you know we didn't have a building permit, so we, we write to them, mm -hmm. and then they come in, and they, if we're lucky, <laughs> they yeah. file a building permit. So I'll um, so just I'll uh, work it out. The yes, I can. yes. Okay. Uh, so so this is just I don't see any objection to putting these things. It's a PDF. It's a form. Yeah. So and apparently the front office is now okay with not handing them out. Mm -hmm. Michael and Jody had some way of describing it that I couldn't quite grasp the, the logic of. And something about, well, if they, if they didn't pick it up here and have our people start to fill it out, then we, I, I don't even remember what it was because it was not logical. <laughs> I mean, if, if you need to have a building permit, it doesn't have to go start there, yeah. you know. And if you're going to take a piece of paper you can copy from anywhere, if you're going to defraud and make it out, well, it's fraud, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and people commit fraud, and it, and if we catch them, then that, that's not legal. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't believe putting a PDF online is is going to uh, either inhibit or encourage fraud. No, I, so, I agree. All right, so we'll start putting them online, okay. and I think uh, Salme. I talked to, the other thing that we want to put online is the building permit log. It's public information, huh. right? So uh, Caroline is going to work with Tia to get a mm -hmm. link to, to the spreadsheet that you do. Yep. And so once that's there, then we can talk about how we sign the building permits. Because, you know, if all we need to do is make them public, you know, they're, they're public information. So once the link is available, 
we can uh, talk, because right now we can't, I guess according to our zoning ordinance, we are the ones who have to sign. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we can just say, okay, it's the end of the meeting and we're just going to take the next five minutes, we're going to sign the building permits. And you can just have a, one line in the minutes to say, building permits were signed, and then in parentheses say they are available online, spreadsheet is available online, and that's it, or at town hall. And you don't, we don't have to put the specific building permit. Mm -hmm. Just like we don't put each individual check that we sign, mm -hmm. right? Right. So if people really want to see building permits that were that we signed, or and we can add a tab for certificates of occupancy, mm -hmm. they can go to that spreadsheet. But it's not linked yet, so the only thing we're talking about right now is putting the PDF for the building permit online. You'll still you... be able to get blanks here, though. Oh, sure. Yeah, yes. It won't be solely online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't have to come in mm -hmm. and get it started here. So we're okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, that's for me. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. SRGC vacancies. There's only one right now, and that is Judy Nelson, who resigned. Uh, and it's as of July 1. So it's not, I think it's June 1. It's June, I think it's June 1. So I. I checked in with Mike, and I may have done it, I don't know, if, I think I may have just done it individually, uh, and asked if he, if, is he, if he's interested, or are you interested in being on the Stratford Regional Planning Commission? It's an hour and a half meeting once a month during the day. It's like from 10 to 11.30 or 12 on a Friday, once a month. And then once a quarter, there's a late afternoon meeting, like at 4 o'clock. That's what, that's the... That's the meeting schedule for Stratford Regional Planning Commission. And where is the meetings held? So, good question. So the Friday ones are held at the SRPC uh, headquarters in Rochester, near Rochester uh, High School there. Yep. Spalding. Okay. You know, what, used, what was going to be the Spalding mm -hmm. higher in that building with all those other things. The quarterlies are held, those are, those are really interesting, they're held around the um, district. Oh, okay. So they were in Rollinsford sometime I don't know when, talking about uh, agriculture, different types of agriculture, I don't know, but it was a little panel and our uh, Grand Moore Farm, um, Phil was on it. Mm -hmm. And there was a professor from UNH on it and uh, a woman from some other group. So it was a nice discussion, maybe it was on local farming or eating local or something like that. Other times it's been on microbreweries, and we had that in Dover, and uh, the Seventh Settlement guy I was speaking at that, and this is when he was talking about going to the no-tip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 actually, the, the, those late afternoon ones that happen once a quarter are interesting. Mm -hmm. The Friday morning ones, here's my fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're always, they're filled with information, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it can be uh, frustrating to know that, well, that, that's a great idea. Well, we don't we don't have any capacity to mm -hmm. to use that great idea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you'll hear from Department of Transportation. We'll hear from people who are involved in mental health and physical health, and uh, you know, with programs that are statewide that we can latch into, latch onto. You know, uh, regional transportation like Coast is sometimes there, and of course, it doesn't make sense for them to come here. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what being an SRPC commissioner is. So if you would like to think about it as well, we can we can we will defer this. Well, there there will be a second actually there will be a second vacancy because as soon as I think I can, we need to fill Judy's. Mm -hmm. As soon as I think I can find somebody to, to fill mine. Oh, I you're mean, both on it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So as soon as but I don't want to leave Rollinsford high and dry. Mm -hmm. Although if there's a meeting in June, I won't be going to it, obviously, mm -hmm. but. I'll go to the July meeting until such time as we can find someone. So there's one definite vacancy now. There, there will be another vacancy as soon as I can find somebody who. I mean, are you opposed to putting it on like through the email um, post and seeing if someone in town is interested in being part of it? I'm not opposed, but there are three people who I think are. One has already shown interest, and the other two are planners, so I think they would be good people to ask. Mm -hmm. And I might ask, we might ask the planning board first mm -hmm. before, but and then 
because we did put it out on the list. Mm -hmm. We put it out on the list in March, and we got uh, Jackie Schroeder. Mm -hmm. And um, we we at least put her on the conservation committee. She may still be interested in, in doing in doing SRPC. Mm -hmm. So she's one. There's uh, Michelle Mears, who's a planner for the city of Rochester and lives in Rollinsford. Mm -hmm. So I mean, having a planner is a really good mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's, I think her name is Elena Pietsu, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. She's a planner for the city of Dover, mm -hmm. who's recently moved to um, Rollinsford. Mm -hmm. So so my thought, and Elena said something about, well, come, come talk to me during the summer. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be very interesting. I just don't know if I could do it enough. It is, I'm, you know, it work is, full time. It, yes. So, I mean, as and somebody I who modest. doesn't work full time, yeah, it's still a, a slog. Lot. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess I would rather you have someone who really wants to be part of it and and has the time to do it would be the best. Cause so, are you? Would you object to our appointing Michael? And and you can still think about the second one, or and we'll look around for to see if we can with some of these people that I've checked with? Yeah, I mean... How yeah. would you like to think about that? Well, I'll think about it because where I work, my biggest months of um, are spring and summer. Fall and winter are slower, so I have more options. However, you know, I just, I don't want to commit to something that I right. would be on. So yeah, I mean, I will think about it if you want to point Michael, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. If we, I, would, yeah. I would love to hear a motion to appoint Michael okay. to this current... He said, he oh, said okay. he's, he's, on, he's on the TAC, which is the Transportation Advisory Committee, which is a subset. Okay. And I, I asked him, so Mike, would you, would you be willing, how would you feel about being a commissioner? And then we look for somebody for TAC, it's not quite so many meetings. Mm -hmm. and it's more road-based. I was actually thinking, I wonder about if, if we could talk to Herb Uetta about because he's very concerned about safety and mm -hmm. roads and mm -hmm. Portland Avenue, right. and has a, a you know great administrative background and is mm -hmm. also an engineer. So, so I don't know. So we might consider that. Yeah. But yeah. the that position was empty for quite a while before Michael decided to, to do it. So, so yeah, I I would entertain a motion to uh, to appoint Michael to the vacant SRPC. I'll make that motion. All right, then I will second that motion. Okay. So, hearing no comments or questions, I will call, will call it. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations, aye. Michael Brooklyn. Yes. <laughs> see? See what, see what you get for going, to go, to go to Baltimore? <laughs> Classics Roads Policy, that was just a remind. I mean, I did review it. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, at some point it might be good to, to review. We did find the signed copy. Okay. So the board did sign it, and it's up there. Uh, and that's just their reminder. So we're going to table uh, visioning. Okay. MS4 permitting. I don't really want to, there's nothing to say other than I've met with the Stormwater Committee, and I feel that the process of trying to file this notice of intent, which is due on October 1st is daunting, and I have a subcommittee meeting this Wednesday that uh, I hope will help for one small part of it, but it, it's a big, it's a lot to chew, and I don't, uh, I'm saying that, I'm, I'm wondering if we might need to use, we've $5,000 in the budget for stormwater management, we've spent one for the Seaco Stormwater Coalition dues, we may need some help just to get this thing written, so. Okay. Just saying that. Uh, tabling the conversation about having twice monthly. Mm -hmm. And Oak Street. Oak Street Boundary, that's Mike's. And the other thing we talked about Oak Street is that John Storer may be interested in calling a meeting. And should, I think I think we should be at least a board member yeah. as well as uh, a road agent. Okay. Uh, so I think we did everything. Uh, we're ready for the folders, I think. Okay. Okay, building permit um, 
260 Bear Road, Matt Bannon. Um, I can't read his handwriting. Cosmetic upgrades to existing kitchen, bath, painting, I floor. We'll probably don't need that. Yeah. We don't need it. Just, just the uh, value is 30000 The fee is $325. Okay. Yeah, I can sign. I can sign for us. It doesn't make any difference. Just goes with that. Oh, I said both good. Okay. Now I think though that the expires so permit granted. Do you have to fill out expires on? I never know what to suggest. I think we should ask Tom to fill it in. Go on. Give him thirty. What's he been giving them? Six months. Six months. All right, so let's say um, December 15th. Thank you so much. <laughs> let's make it December 31st, though, just to. Sure. Okay. Be generous. Be generous. All right. Okay. The next one is 2018-030 Chinook House. Chinook. Oh, oh, it yes. could be one of the Second Street. Second, yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the. Oh, they, yeah. they have they each have their own name, each oh. of those buildings. Oh, okay. They did it online. They didn't have the signature. Remove and replace um, roofing. Uh, value at eleven thousand dollars, and the fee is one hundred and thirty-five dollars. What were you sorry? Tell me what were you saying? Oh, it's just the, that was came in. They messed up copied. With payment. Yeah, no, they copied. And, and they copied it. And, and it Came in with payment. Did, is their payment correct? Oh, yeah. It's oh, okay. Okay. But we had no signatures, so we couldn't okay. accept it. I was talking to my neighbor, Mark, who was happy to tell me uh, that he did get a building permit or whatever, but he hasn't received it yet. I said, well, well, we don't really have a follow-through, so just, but I know we signed it. The board signed Mark Barlow. Mm -hmm. He signed it. So I said, just come pick it up. No, we don't send it out. Just come pick it up, pay for it, whatever. But he was uh, one of the ones. Yeah. Well, no, no. He was the one who was talking to me just very innocently one day, saying, well, I'm going to do this, that, or the other thing. Since after he moved in, I said, uh-huh. And uh, you thought about applying for a building permit? <laughs> what did he say? Huh? <laughs> oh, dear. The other thing is the drop off, so we'll do oh, yeah, that there. Yeah, Checks, that's Let's easy. With this. Okay. And now this. Um, this is uh, a letter uh, to Brian and Caitlin Hood, on Prospect Street. Uh, 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 renovations to a house. Oh, right, so it's, it's, do you have a building permit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it required? Do Tom sign it, or am I supposed to sign it? Looks like you are. Okay. What's the street address? 526, right? 526 Prospect Street. Yeah. Okay, this one is a request for disbursement uh, for the library director. Uh, the amount of requested disbursement is $2,500. Collection development, summer reading, children's programming, collection maintenance, internet expense, and library supplies. So this is how the library accesses the... They get their money? Yeah, their money. Oh, okay. From us. So right. I will, because this money, I will ask for a motion for okay. this Okay, I request. motion to um, issue out $2,500 to the library um, for supplies. And I will second... six 6-1. Great. And I will second that. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 So, by the way, if you, uh, whenever you are ready to get uh, payment, your stipend, mm -hmm. as long as, you know, we just don't like to pay out a quarter until the quarter is mm -hmm. like done or just mm -hmm. about done, this is, this is the form that you would oh, just okay. ask Caroline for request for disbursement. Tom asked us to do that several years back. 
Tom Marauder. Mm -hmm. so, well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah for so, sure. Um, I just want you to know I did review the citizens' um, you did, credit card. I did, and it looks good to me. I also reviewed it. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad for you did that. And I did spot something. I'll show you what I spotted. Okay. And I asked Caroline, and then we, we I found the answer later on. Where's Caroline's section? Kevin. Caroline. Yeah. All right. So uh, I had forgotten that this is $160, mm -hmm. whatever it is, $160. Mm -hmm. When this this is our, the Google accounts, rector at Rollinsford, mm -hmm. Denise mm -hmm. Knowles at Rollinsford, mm -hmm. and, you. and it's 10 bucks a month. I mean, it's the best deal ever because we have, it's not just the emails. We have unlimited storage. It's vaulted, so if, you know, it never goes away. If somebody mm -hmm. issues a subpoena, we can grab it. At least that's mm -hmm. what I've, I've been told. The servers are all within the United States. Uh, this is what they uh, have done for the business uh, plans, which is what we're under. And so, anyway, we were paying it through a third party who was offering some support, and they bowed out, and Google says, well, we'll bill you directly, and do you want us to just charge your credit card. Mm -hmm. So it's 160 bucks a, a pop mm -hmm. right now, which is within our thing. Mm -hmm. So so that so we'll be seeing it once a month. Okay. Um, on the credit card. And that's for Google. You know, there there uh, I remember when we were first looking at this, there were towns that were paying tens tens and tens of thousands of dollars for computer stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and 160 bucks a month. Yeah, that's not bad. And we don't have to worry about, you know, spam, security. We don't have to worry about, you know, all these things, ransom things. Where Remember Jerome Computer, I think, was ransomed the years yeah. back. All this terrible stuff. The terrible stuff. You just don't have the money to support, you know, IT, those kinds of, right. that kind of IT specialization for security, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, so. Well, so this looks good to me yeah, as well. I'm to look at it as well. Already something we were. I don't know what this is. Um, this is a town said oil company. Oh, is this our annual fuel plan? Yep. Yeah. What is that for? That's uh, so we get a fuel contract that says they, they'll offer it so much above wholesale. They call it rack. So, so much above wholesale. What what fuel? I mean, oil. Uh, so okay. it's, it's, I believe it's propane or not propane. It's it's heating oil, okay. okay, and it's propane as well, I believe, okay. not diesel. I think it's propane. So you don't you don't do we didn't do well. We uh, issued an RFP. The school issued an RFP a few years back. We issued one. We've been going with Townsend because the last couple of times it's sort of like the roads. The last couple of times we did it, they were the lowest. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they came out of. Do you remember? Who, it was a local company then Townsend's bought them out. I was trying to think of who it was that was before. Mm. And I just don't, I don't remember. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if if you thought the town had the, again, it's a question of do we have the resources to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've given us good service. They, uh, I don't know what, I didn't see this one. I don't know what the cost is. Fuel oil costs are going up. I just did our own fuel oil plan, so. Well, it doesn't say. It doesn't say? Certificate of state use. Well, maybe so this maybe is something different. A, yeah. To support vendors' claim for a credit or payment under section blah, 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 the IRS. So the, the undersigned buyer hereby certifies the following under penalty of perjury. Buyer will use the undyed diesel dealer to which this certificate relates for the exclusive use of the state or local government. Well, that would be true. We don't sell our diesel oil to anybody else. We just use it. The certificate applies to the following. I really, I, I guess I don't know. Can you ask Caroline to say what more information? What, yeah, what is the what is the purpose of this, and what do we need to be thinking of? I'm sorry, I was way off base. But we should we get one soon because. Uh, I just got mine. 
So maybe you can put secondarily, what about the annual fuel contract? This is for uh, Matthew and Catherine Mishu. There we Water go. Plain. Um, More been, plain. Appri been apprised of the deck installations. There you go. I'm still not driving, so uh, the Seacoast Stormwater Coalition that we belong to, that George goes to, and one of our board members, Paul Gasol, you know, there's usually one of the three of us that are there, sometimes all three of us. I've missed the last few because I either had another town engagement or I haven't been able to drive. So, but this is specifically uh, to address, it's a subcommittee specifically to address one of the sections in our MS4 notice of intent. To, I think it's a notice of intent to comply with the MS4 regulations. I'm never quite sure how to articulate it, but anyways, it's a section we have to figure out how, what are we going to do for public outreach and for education. So that's what I'm going to, and it's Wednesday. And uh, Friday, I'm going to Stockholm. Yay. Which has nothing to do with the town. <laughs> So, Denise, what's... Uh, I am doing planning board tomorrow in Mike's absence. Oh, that's right. I have no idea or anything about it, but I will sit there and try right. to learn. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I can do. And, and, I, and, I, I, and I applaud you for it because I would be saying the same thing if it were the reverse. Yeah, so, so I'm going to be attending that Michael one. Michael has so. been the person that we've looked to for... Hopefully they're not looking for me for a lot of answers. <laughs> Uh, well, th there's a planning consultant. So John Krebs is usually at the meetings, okay. and so he's the pro. And so if there's a question, mm -hmm. I mean, really our ex officio is there to bring things back and forth mm -hmm. and not expect it to really be the expert on uh, planning. But, that's you know, so. And that's here? And is it at 70 now? Uh, it's here. Okay. Seven. Okay. Yeah, I know right. that they used to. They have their one committee that's sort of kept to the old seven o'clock. Okay. So well, that's what I'm doing. I don't have anything else for the week. I don't know. My trip's out of town. Yeah. yeah, trying to get my committees together for Chief yeah. Dushan and get CIP. The CIP. So yeah. I'm going to send those letters out this week. So the rent committee wants to move forward with getting funds from the local Walmart store, which we need signature from the board on. I didn't know if the letter was still in the folder or if we needed to do another letter to have the board sign to give us permission to go ahead and um, get funds from them. They have a specific format. Mm -hmm. Or if it needs any updating before we sign it. So let me concern this letter is to verify, I don't know why it's a capital B, that the town of Rollins from New Hampshire is a certified agency. It's, we're not an agency, we're a municipality. It's a certified municipality is recognized by the state of New Hampshire. The town of Rollins was incorporated on July 3rd, 1849. I'll assume that was true. I, I, it's about right. I guess that's all I can say. By the New Hampshire General Court Legislature, the Rollins Recreation Committee is authorized by the current select board authorizing agents of the town to request funding. We hereby authorize the Rollins Food Recreation Committee to apply for funds from Walmart and Walmart Community Foundation for the enhancements of their programs, there being the Recreation Committee and the betterment of the community as a whole. So, um, Can I make some edit? Is the, did you write this? It, it's this? from their website, but you can make edits, and I will. Um, it's well, from whose website? Walmart's website. This That's how they want it written. Looking for? 
you can change. Well, I'm gonna, we're not an agency. We're a municipality. Right. So change it so, yeah. as necessary. So we're a municipality. And I can bring it back next week. The town of Rawls, who is incorporated. It has to be me and Mike. I, I'll assume that that's about right. It's authorized by the current select board to request funding. I guess that's true. Mm -hmm. And so we hereby authorize the Rollinsford Recreation Committee to apply for funds from Walmart and Walmart Community Foundation for the enhancements of, of the Rec Committee programs. And the betterment of the community as a whole. I mean, my only concern is that, again, to the extent that there are terms and conditions associated with this application. This is for the gift cards, not for big grants, correct? Right. The community foundation we talked about while you were ill a couple of months ago, and we decided between the board, the select board and the committee, that there were no um, areas that we fit into. Yeah. But we, the local store still requires this letter giving us permission to accept money on behalf of the town from them, or gift cards. Well, should we remove Walmart Community Foundation then from this letter? Sure. Because you're not going to be replying to them, you're only replying to the Walmart. So where is that? Mm -hmm. And this would be up to $250. Right. The Community Foundation would be $250 or more. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just going to the local versus the... National. national or state or probably national, yeah. So they're just going to vote. And they, they just need something to buy for their files that they're giving out gift cards. And it was talked about if they did get gift cards that they would use that to buy the um, products that they would need, either uh, water or freeze pops or, the or equipment that got broken that like sprinklers they were talking about last night. Yeah. And swimming so, pools and yeah. water balloons so, and activities and snacks. As long as you can wait till next Monday, I would at least make these two edits. And, yeah, yeah. And all you need is two, the two board. So I guess I would take Suzanne's name off so that if they see an, an empty place, they may not be wanting so be to fine. accept it. That would be fine. If you you know, know, just to avoid confusion. Confusion. Yeah, yeah. That, that's you all. know, that works. Um, um, you can have it CC'd. Suzanne. Yeah, you could do that. So at least she's on it, but just not have a signature or whatever. line. Just, or it might just, leave a confusion. Do you, do you, do I will take you that. Okay. Because right. I believe I have saved on the computer. Okay. When she's done it. Sure. I have this damnable sense of precision, and I, I apologize for it, but there's some things that, you know, we're not an agency, we're a municipality. Right. And, no, that's true. Yeah. 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 So. Um, there were issues on the web page when I was the town website when I was looking for information um, about tax documents. Does that go through you or do we email like, someone? Can you can, like I what? I went for instance. and I like looked up budgets, like I did a search for budgets and I clicked on the budgets that came up, and it took me to a blank page. And so I ended up having to go through a bunch of tabs. To get there, like I had to go to tax documents. All right. So let let let's put aside the the kind of problem that you encounter, which we should try to figure out. But what is it that you're looking for that maybe we can help? Well, I ended up finding. Oh, it. You, you did. Find, were you, which budget were you? I was looking for. I needed a copy of the um, current budget for some current reason. authorized the budget. The operating budget. The town operating budget. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. All right, so you just you just chanced upon it or stumbled upon it? Or? Well, I decided to do a search, and that's where it took me to a blank page. But then I looked under like tax um, voter documents or something like that. Okay. Tell me would, documents. Yeah, I would. Uh, there is a link. It's Tia, but but there's a link somewhere down, and it says Webmaster. If you have a question or an issue, contact. So I would try that email just to let her know if you could. That you did a search, you're just using the word budget, and everything came up blank. Yeah. So I, just, I don't have an answer myself. I just want to make sure that you at least got the information that you needed and that you have. So. And I had requested at last night's rec meeting to have another rec committee member come, possibly a chair, and I've heard back from one of them that they can come next Monday or the 25th. 
and I suggested maybe the 25th would be better because that's the opening day of rec camp. For, but, for purposes of? To talk to the board if there were any concerns. Well, the teen camp, I think we've got to straighten out before that. So, would you like me to? When, when can they come? Next Monday. Next Monday. And or the, tw and or the 25th. Well, I would go next Monday uh, just because I get, that is before it starts and we need to I, make a I, I decision I would say if they, if they can decide this week mm -hmm. to just pull the plug, I, I, I think we're fine. We're fine with that. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. Denise can write a letter ASAP mm -hmm. that strongly encourages that because the, the expectation that the board has is that the expenses in that, in the nice budget that Dee put together that say teen camp, and Camp Raleigh have revenue on coming in to support that. Some of those lines say it's town, like the $500 mm -hmm. for the fireworks or the... Mm -hmm. Or the $300 for the senior program. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and that, yeah. that's town fund. But the rest, where it says it's coming from the revenue, we, that's what we expect. And so... The expectation is. Yeah. I what just, you don't want, what we don't want to see happen is that the whole rec committee is jeopardized because of, you know, a good idea, but it's not... It may not work this year. It just needs to be more thought out. My, I'm happy to represent the rec in my designated areas, but I am not the whole committee and would like some well, other... I think Denise is going to send a letter, a strong letter to follow. This is that Denise is going to send a letter yeah. to the rec yeah. committees telling them, ASAP, preferably this week. Yeah, that they need to make a decision whether or not they're going to go forward. And, that's what they and the going forward is with the expectation that they're going to cover going the to be, revenue. It's going to be funded completely and not just because it's a budget line item. But I know when I've brought grants, you've had some questions as a board that I'm not always able to answer, so I asked if there's well, no problem with having yeah, a we always like to meet, yeah, that's we, fine. Yeah, that's and having problem. conversations and just kind of, if, if there are mechanics that would be helpful to talk to with them, absolutely, you know, that's why we're here, one of the reasons we're here. But but the team camp, I think, needs a decision soon. Okay. But if there's anything that's going to happen next, I would make it next week, just okay. to, because it's getting close, and just to I make will sure let any them know need that any questions. Yeah. If they can actually make it next week, that would be beneficial. Okay. Okay. So we do have one more item that I think Denise is going to request it go into non-public yeah. uh, for purpose, oh, I'll let you just, for purpose of a confidential financial so, affairs issue. Right. So right. I'll let you make I'll make the motion that we go in non-public to discuss um, financial, um, um, confidential financial, confidential information. Personal confidential financial information. Correct. Okay, and I will second that okay. and call a roll call because I have to. Denise? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. Okay. And uh, that's the last item on our agenda.